Okay, this Devon Gunsmith diary is one of those epic fails that comes along. Not of my making, but a local gunsmith firm chose to do this job for a, who is now my customer. The gentleman asked for a raised comb. And you may or may not be able to see. The grain runs that way on the top and that way on the main body of the stock. So the, the planted item has been glued on facing the wrong way with the grain. And the same here, you can see it quite clearly there. The, the main body of the grain is running in this way and the top part, which is a different piece of wood and obviously is not going to match perfectly, somewhat pinker, is running this way. So that's the dilemma. Now, with all these stories, the tales of woe that I receive, like a lot of other gunsmiths, will receive these stories. And I'm not saying that the customer's not being completely accurate with the facts, but they have their own narrative at the end of the day, as do everybody. Everybody has their own truth if you want to be woke. Uh, so the facts as presented to me place a fellow colleague somewhat in a bad light. I've gained a customer who could be beneficial to me. So I'm not complaining. And uh, I'd rather than not have to do remedial works at all. I don't think I know a gunsmith who would like to do remedial works. And I'm sure there's tales of jobs I've done where I've caved in done a job cheaply at a very reasonable price um, with those constraints in mind. I suspect this is one of those jobs. I think the gentleman might have gone along and said, oh, well, what's the cheapest price you can do this quite expensive alteration for? I suspect, playing devil's advocate, that my gentleman colleagues probably said to him, you need a comb razor fitted there, which where you cut it out, play some um equipment inside counterbore it in and create a comb razor i'll go and get my tatty old i'll go and get my tatty old trigun to demonstrate okay so this is a rough and ready well used trigun this is a simplistic form of a trigun all the adjustments are made on the back and on the comb razor. And as you can see, there's some ironmongery fitted inside that allows you to raise and lower the comb, shift it from side to side, and change the general dimensioning. Now, this is my ratty old piece of kit that I use. Didn't ever finish it properly because didn't need to. It's fit for purpose. So that's what would I would have expected to have seen on there as a comb razor. So I guess if you like the um the warning to customers is beware what you ask for because you may well get exactly what you asked for and it may be that it wasn't what you desired you can't do this kind of work and expect it to be a cheap job now I don't know what they charged him so I can't comment on that I've knocked it back in order to see what the problems are um, I did do some experimentation with some shellac sealants, some dark button polishes to see that if there was a quick and easy fix, inverted commas, there never is unfortunately, but I'm um, so I'm at the moment I'm cleaning off those little bits that I wanted to to see if I could just fix it up for the customer at a minimal cost. Again, like all us gunsmiths, we work for a price for the job. We don't really do, you know, everybody thinks we're wealthy people because of the ch what we charge, but it's hours spent on jobs sometimes. Many hours, and quite often a price for the job is the only way to quote for it. 
you're gonna, if you say, oh, it's going to be £45 an hour, people go, oh my goodness, he's making a lot of money. Well, unfortunately not. You know, accountants, we all have to have limited companies because the firearms requirements, they prefer it. So we don't get a choice, a lot of our expenditure, before we even pay rent just to be licensed and insured with an alarm system, with a contract on it. Expect, because, you know, customers don't realise we're spending in excess of five to six thousand pounds. That's before rent, before business rates, before taxation. So before you even open your door, it's, it's in excess of six thousand pounds per year to run a gunsmith business. So 45 pound an hour or whatever, same as a car mechanic, they're charging 50, 60 pound an hour these days, plus that. Uh, the guy that's actually doing the work isn't getting that, trust me. So um, I'm gonna just see if I can get you to see this. We're looking at this sort of almost a cherry color. I don't know if you can see it there versus a very yellowy brown stop so we've got a mismatch in the tones straight away uh possibly easier to see there I'm trying to get the angle right on my camera so those grains are running that way these grains are running that way so there's automatically a clash and where grain is pushing away on this it'll be pushing forward so i'll get dark dark stains here when i put add more stain um and it'll be dark here and light here because the two, two grains are in opposition to each other, if you imagine an invisible situation. If all the lignin in the wood was invisible, that's what you'd see with the fibres. So, I don't want to let my customer down. We've had some video calls. I've done a whole load of work, which I may or may not include in the video diary just to see what I explain what I do, especially we tend to be working distance now, don't we? So there'll be need some checkering sorted out because there's an interesting sort of checkering border going on here. I think there must have been some overrun on the sanding. They've had to do it again. Inevitably that happens. There's always an additional cost when everything gets done. And of course there's a grain line or a glue line and invariably the glues are always harder than the wood themselves and they tend to bulge out if you're not careful. So I'm pretty sure if I was a prophet, I would have guessed they would have said, put a flipping comb razor in. All right, you've got a, a cutaway piece, but it looks like it's been done by design. This is not something I'd want to see ever on any gun. And there's probably some very simple explanation, like they only had a piece of this, this quality walnut in the workshop. The guy wanted, didn't want to spend a lot of money, I'm guessing. So there was constraints on the time and the effort that it was going to take. All this shaping up isn't that difficult to do. However, on the nose of the comb here, there was a hell of a disparity, which again will show up in some of the conversations I've had, the video conversations. And as I keep looking at it, I see little blemishes that I need to take away before preparation <coughs> is complete. And the reason I sound nasally and coughy and cough all the time is because it's the dusty environment that we work in. So copious cups of tea. And much, much effing and jeffing quite often. <coughs> Excuse me. All the staining efforts being an epic fail. So only one option, strip it all back, start again. You can clearly see that top is different. I'll uh, wet up a bit of cloth and show you. All right, so difficult to do this easily with one hand this is just some meths and you can see the yellowy brown finish on the bottom of the stock and the comb addition got a sort of pinky color there you go that's a good example 
that's what I'm up against. That's what I've got to try and blend. See how that goes, eh? Bit of stain coming up. All right, let's see what this does then. Spirit based stain. I'll just rub it up with some cloth to start with. Charge up the cloth. Some stain. Right, so. Start by adding a good layer of stain on the bottom half. And same here. This has got an antique walnut or antique mahogany finish. So hopefully it will carry the stain. There you go. You can see the stain there on the on the monogram button. So I'm going to hope that improves the depth sufficiently so it's not so yellow at the bottom. Keep coating it, let it dry, put a bit more on, etc. At the moment, I'm not going to put any on the top section. I've got a lighter stain for the top section. Hopefully that will do. All right, so now we've got the lighter version of the same stain just for this top section. So hopefully we'll get a bit of blending going on. The darker section for the lighter and the lighter section for the darker that doesn't look too bad. Swap over, stain the ex existing stained piece with a bit more stain. See if we can't build up some depth. Well, I think we might have it. I don't want to go depth dark on the top stain too much because there'll be too much darkness to it. I think I might cracked it. A sort of blended approach, perhaps. Maybe, maybe we've got it. Maybe I've cracked it. Who knows? Back to the slightly yellower stain to tone down the pinky part of the new comb edition. Hopefully we don't have too much of a peripheral line. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? And I think, I don't know if we can see that. I'll go back to Wobbly Cam and see if I can't show that to you. I think that might just have cracked it. Very minimal rubbing down, I think, required on this job. Yeah, I think I've got it not so red on the top slightly sort of more balanced coloration who knows may have got it right then back to wobbly cam you're never going to completely disguise it but i think we've got a chance now it's always going to be a bit darker because this lower part of wood is a lot lighter especially around here there's quite a yellow i thought it was part of the I actually thought it was the um, resin that Maruku used, but it's not. It's just a weird feature of the, this billet of wood the stock was made from. Right, so I'm going to try laying up a bit of shellac polish to see what we get. Follow on the camera. Okay, dokie, let's uh, 
try the old dark garnet. That might do it. Let me struggle with the childproof cap for 10 minutes. Okay, quickly lay this up. Hope it doesn't settle too quickly. Start pulling on me. Well, feeling a bit hopeful. That makes a change. <laughs> oh yeah, that's better. That's better. I don't know whether you can see it. It's first ceiling coat, so. It ain't going to be special. Yeah, that seems to have taken better. It's always going to end up knocking some of the dye off because it's a spirit dye. So you can't do much about that. You just have to do your best. Probably have to go and run through the checkering a bit after this as well. Need that need to let that dry really. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let it dry. You never know your luck. Well, it looks better than it came in. It's never going to be as good as it should be. It should have been one piece of wood from a fresh restocking. You know, a man that would be good for that, but hey, that wasn't the job. Yeah, that's it. That'll have to be it. Okay, so I've just given this a little burnish just to take off any loose fibres sticking up from the sanding and the dye. Um, it's all looking quite nice, a little bit matte, a slight bit of a key on it, um, which we'll be able to produce final or a polish on and this job can get gone finally so it doesn't look too bad there's it's never going to be right because of this strange decision to plant a comb on now I have done them like this but I've done a Monte Carlo where it comes down here and it looks like it's intended to be like it. I would prefer to have seen a comb lifter installed on the original stock. It would have at least looked like it was intended for the to have a cut there. And it would have been all one, one piece of wood, of course. Anyway, this is the job as we find it. So we just do our best for the customer. Okay, dark stain finish. A little touch of Alkinet. Well, it's, it's linseed dyed with a little bit of Alkinet. And another drop more of that stain. Alright, here we go. 
hopefully we can keep it all going nice and smoothly. In all one flowing motion. You can see the stain is still there, look on the button. And that, my friends, is there, as they say, that. Right, so let's get some of this garnet polish on this job now. Drop a Valkanet on form. Linseed Valkanet in it. Get this good and wet. Here we go. Yeah, that's looking good. Looking possum. Very nice. So now just a bit of an inseed and I'll connect. The yeah, alkanet happens to be in there, that's not there for a reason other than the fact it's already there for another job I did. It won't come into any harm, it will give a slight tinge to the oil, that's all. Which is what kind of what we're looking for anyway on this job. <coughs> yeah, that's looking okay now. By using a little bit of linseed at the final polish. It stops it sticking and, and picking up and tugging. Well, it's still slightly soft, so it's effectively a, a lubrication interface to burnish it in. You can use burnishing creams. Some people do, some people don't. I leave that to to dry now, properly cure. And hopefully that will be a nice finished job. A little bit of burnishing and a bit of oil. Maybe a little bit of wax. <coughs> Excuse me. Need some new lungs. Right. That's as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. Yeah, that'd be okay. Okay, mustn't forget. 
Childproof locks, why do they do it? Honestly. It's only children that can flip and open them. Right. Just a little bit of shellac sealing on the final coat on the fore end. So we've already I've already done this off camera, stained it up so that it matches the depth and tonality. It's the final little burnish and a clean little wipe over. I leave it there. Do know when to stop. That's something you'll have to practice. There you go. Final wipe is actually quite a very nice finish. There we go. Put it back together again. So I'm just going to palm burnish this because it doesn't need anything more. I'm not looking for a high, high duster. I just want it to be a nice finish. Which we can do some walnut oil on afterwards when we've got it nicely finished. I will need to clean up the checkering, obviously, because there's been a little bit of a blind over there, which you can probably see there. Clean that out with some checkering tools in a little while. And now we just need that to I'll let that rest now. And I'm afraid it's as good as it gets with this kind of blended top. Uh, I'm trying to see if the camera can catch it or not. It's not too bad. <clears throat> I'll leave that to dry. Now this is where I have to be patient and wait. <clears throat> right, so other jobs you need to do when you're doing this kind of work. Cleaning out the checkering. This is that horrible laser the checkering that no gunsmith loves. I can promise you that. Just a brass brush. Just lift all that crap. Dust, finger grease, excess bits of polish and dirt from the cleaning of the gun. When you were getting it all ready. And you basically just follow the checkering lines up and down with a little brass brush. You can do this in your standard maintenance po post or pre-season cleanup. That just gets all that grease and dirt and dust out of your checkering. This customer didn't ask for checkering as an option, so I won't go through it with checkering cutters. Okay, that's essentially clean now. All I do now is an old toothbrush and my good old trusty Alconet dyed uh, linseed oil. Just brush it in. This is to stop dirt getting in there again you think oh my goodness he's clogging up all the checkering what it does is it just nourishes that bit of dry wood because that is typically not a finished wood because you need the grip this will not influence or affect that okay because what we're going to do is take a clean piece of cotton wadding or cloth and immediately take off the excess basically just clean it up look, and look at the dirt I'm picking out that's lifting out of that that's something you should do in your normal gun cleaning routine this could be done once or twice a season just to ensure that you've got all that dirt out that could be residual staining or anything from my work but there you go. Just use your little brush there to lightly make sure there's no bits of lint stuck in there. There we go. So now I will clean up the checkering border with a single blade checkering tool because it does get a bit gunky in there again. 
don't know if you can see that on the camera. It's all a bit dirty there. Bring the work to the camera. So very carefully clean up that. This has been previously done by a previous gunsmith just to clean up the work that was already done there. You've got to kind of brace your fingers a little bit. I don't, this is not a re-checkering, this is just running the checker and the tool through. Get all that gunk off the end of there, look. All that dirt. Anyway, so that's what we're doing there, just a little bit of due diligence, a little bit of professionalism to finish the job. Light's not very good here. I should be doing this in better light, but... There we go. You can see there's some bits coming away. So, a bit of cotton wadding cloth or something. Just clean that up there. And then there's a little bit of roughness on these pieces where it's been handled. Everything's ready now for a little drop of walnut oil. I've got a couple of old pots here. It is a walnut oil preparation. It smells like a Chinese takeaway. It's got a lovely aromatic aroma. Right, I literally just invert that. That's all the oil I need. Put a bit on my fingers. Just wet the wood everywhere, even, even the checkering. Some people will be inhaling sharp, deep, deep in hate takes of breath there but I don't really mind this is to nourish that wood and look at the sheen it immediately puts on that you can persist with this with palm burnishing you actually get a beautiful long lasting oil finish you can do it on the raw wood if you so wish if you had a really nice piece of wood that didn't need so much staining as this one required Trying to catch the light there. See that? It looks pretty nice. It smells heavenly. Right, I will let that cure, evaporate, dry off a little bit before I, continue, I do another burnishing like this. But it's already there. Now you've got an oil finish. I can choose to rub a bit of that over there just to clean up any residual mess that's left over but yep yeah, we're on the home straight now folks rinse and repeat as they say okay haven't forgotten the forend here's one i prepared earlier that's the cleaning with the wire brush and the toothbrush. Here's the other side. So once again, just give a little bit of a clean out. Get that dust and grime that's built up. Free that up. I'm, ang I'm angling this. I'm not. I'm not hitting the work I've just literally done by the way before you all so what the heck are you doing this is a soft nylon brush this can touch the polish this has been allowed to cure so it's nice and firm okay so once again push that through this is just to clean up all that detritus from the sanding, the oil, the polishing. You don't want any residue in there. There you go. Again, a little bit of oil in that groove, not too much. We're not trying to, that feels really grippy now. It wasn't as grippy as it is now. Grippy is a technical term. Just a quick wipe over with a cloth. 
a clean dry cloth just to lift off any excess. Trying to find a clean white bit, there you go. Any dirt, stain, and residue, there you go, it's lifted it off. Just to lift out the lint, job done. See, that's been stained as well because it needed a, 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 a slight darkening and a good old water oil finish once again. Now, because the checkering is so close to the water oil finish, I will wipe that off again afterwards with that little bit of lint free cloth that's slightly grubby now. So I've used it a number of times. Just because we don't want linseed oil clogging up the checkery. Not really. There you go. There you go. Again, let that air cure, whatever you want to call it. It will like all vegetable oils, they get a slight bit gelatinous if you leave them on too thick. Even olive oil will do this. All the wood oils and the nut oils will do that. There you go, a nice shiny darker to match the, the new stain on the stock. Four end. Okay, so finally, it looks quite satisfactory. There's a little bit of London wax finish on there just to be burnished in. Customer seen the photos and confirmed it looks satisfactory. And that's all I want is customer delight in this. <clears throat> it's never gonna be perfect as we said from the beginning because the grains run the opposite way. And you can see different occlusions pointing the opposite way, which is a shame. There's probably no doubt, no end of reasons why that might have been. Probably based on price, uh, expediency. Um, I know that sometimes customers can be um, somewhat demanding. They want it cheap, quick and good. You can get two of any of the three but not all three at once so there were probably some constraints on the gunsmith so i'm not defending his decision to do it i would have pressed for a comb lifter because it looks like it's supposed to be that way and it is the generally accepted way to compensate for a situation where you've got to add more material um, short of bending the stock which the stock could have taken a bend it depends how much there was i wasn't involved in that process so i can't with all honesty say anyway here we are ready to reassemble so clean action stock bolt it drops through there you might be able to see there i'm going to need the uh the long screwdriver for that because it's not a slotted. Here's what I prepared earlier. So just need the light for a second to find the screwdriver. This is where the, the magnetism of the screwdriver inevitably attracts the screw <laughs> oh that's funny it's always on film isn't it anyway okay i'll do it now i've got something to press against I've got a very thin tunnel of light here so this is not for the benefit of the camera at this stage i'm just trying to get a screwdriver blade to there you go I can't see. Well, I'm off camera, aren't I? There we go. So, just turn it in by hand. There we go. Cinch it up. 
nice and tight. Beautiful. Highly recommend the Kick Easy. You get them from all good gunsmith shops and stores. They have a very solid back plate as opposed to your Berettas and the like. You have this hollow thing, so when they screw that down, it tends to flex, cause you all kinds of problems. This is a nice solid one. Your local gunsmith will happily grind that to fit your gun. And they have these self-healing holes. So in this case, it's a posi drive. Sometimes the friction can grip the screwdriver and actually be harder to screw in the actual screw. That's acceptable and normal. We're nearly there. I just put the other one in to a line. So I know the other gunsmith, um, not personally, but by by reputation. They're, they're a well-known attributed gunsmith. They, I'm sure that they didn't do anything untoward. I think they were simply trying to give the customer customer delight, as we always do. And you don't always succeed. Or the customer, the communication with the customer can be difficult and I'm advising you as customers to always be clear 100% clear I had a job when I had to fix a forend which had a horrible chip in it and the customer wanted it cheap fast and good I said well just so I'm clear I said you're gonna think I'm being pedantic but please what is it that you actually require he said I want it to look like it never happened I said right okay it's going to cost you so much then. I said, and there's still a chance it will pop out because there's a reason for that bit of that chip of wood to have popped out in the first place. I can glue it in and plot and polish it back in. But you can always expect something to go wrong at a later date. What can I say? There we go. So, four end iron in, latch. In. These are ideally, if they're done right, going to be tight. Long screw in the front. Goes off camera slightly. Just going to catch that one out so we don't have any problems with it. Now, this is not a posy. It's more of a PH2 or something. I don't know. Doesn't have the little squares in it. The posi will work, just got to be a bit more careful. Wasn't going to break the video just to quickly change over the screws. These four end screws are quite often frequently, I have to make, make new ones or replace them. Sourcing supply is not always possible, but I can frequently make new ones because they've been stripped or tightened too tightly or more commonly, They've used a, a screw fixing lube. Nice darkened to match. And there we have it. Success, finally, back together. Nice little 12 ball Maruku. Ah. Rookie mistake. Make sure that latches back. I'll lift the bar at the bottom. See that there? When you've released it to undo the stock, you have to pop it back up on the Marukus. So you can lift it like that, and that holds it on, or you can drop it like that. Same way, holds it up. There we have it. Quick check, make sure everything sits nicely and fits again. And it does. Beautiful. Can't wait. Let's see what he says. That colour matches that colour, which is very pleasing. I've got me sweaty palms on this. I'm gonna just have to burnish this a little bit, get rid of this sweatiness. There's still a bit of more curing, but that can that can cure in the that 
think you're in the rack as anywhere else. Excellent. Customers abroad, so he'll get it when he comes back. 120 bore, Maruku stock embellishment. And as always, like and subscribe, folks. Thank you.